thank you for joining me. I'm just gonna have a little walk around. Probably the last time outside for quite some time because we are expecting inclement weather if the forecast is to be believed. So if you're here, let's have a look, see what is going on. I'm currently at 18 degrees in temperature. Not much wind, thank goodness. And the sun has left for the rest of the day and possibly for, yeah, if the forecast is to be believed, another week to 10 days. This is my undercover portico south facing in summer blooming alley. Very, very green, no blooms out here. They're all indoors, but this is what I do. Day in, day out, I bring out candidates that need to be in the light. Saving on electricity needs must, but they get a lot of the Spanish sunshine, even though it is a little bit too cool for some. I find little pockets of warmth for others. So there's an Oncidium Marianne Black, if I remember correctly, no ID in my case, but I think it's a Marianne Black. And she's putting out her spikes. And everybody else is kind of, well, either growing growths, not really maturing growths. I've got sheaths, plenty of sheaths, but I doubt that they're going to amount to anything. This is Lelia Pacavia with two sheaths. But it's nice to see that they're holding on. It's a very, very dangerous time of year for me and my orchids here. Catlia Dawiana back there, that beautiful growth. Just slowly biding its time. Sometimes it's warm enough, they would think it's time to start growing. But as the hormones take a while to kick in, they don't start shooting out anything in rapid succession. I do apologize for my voice. I'm going to try and keep it as steady and less croaky as possible. So some of my Rapiculus Lelias here, uh, yeah, I'm a bit iffy this time of year about their performance, but it got so cold so fast in November that some of them have suffered with some cold damage. Still, I'm not moving them indoors. Let's just say I'm being radical. And the others here are just waiting until they go back indoors. Not much else is going on here except for, once again, she's on the Lelia Purpurata, looking amazing, even though they're empty. Still got happy sap going on the other Lelia Purpurata here. Gives me hope, but look at here. Lelia Flava. Da -da 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 -da. Beautiful spike growing there. I'm really looking forward to seeing her bloom for the first time. So yeah, we're all a little bit scattered here depending on who's doing what, who can tolerate what. And these guys here also go inside. We just recently did the Brasa Bole here, cleaned her up, just observing that the roots don't fail on me. It's a real touch and go time of year. At least my Lutin Blanc is in bloom. Gosh, that took forever. We'll do a care collab on that soon. And then here are the other Rapiculus Lelias that I couldn't bring inside, space issues, but also don't want to bring inside because I want them to be hardy enough to stay outside, what was all the purpose of buying these guys. Well, you can see here cold damage on that leaf, but something is happening in the latest growths. Let's go up a shelf because exciting little developments on my Dendrobium tortile. Let me see. There you go, we've got the nubbins starting, my discovery of the day. Lots of nubbins coming, even in the back here. Now I have to be careful where I touch, because they are very easily popped off. There's also nubbins on the canes in the back. <laughs> could it be, could it be, do I dare dream of spring? The Aurantiflameum is also doing pretty well. It comes indoors every night, but not slowing down as far as I can see. Maybe 2022 is the year for blooms. And look at this, my Alvariguensis, Rapiculus Lelia. Check this out. <laughs> Going up and up. 
very tall spike. Look, amazing. Gotta be careful with that one. Also, first time bloomer, that's gonna be a pretty one. I'm looking forward to that. And as far as my outdoor mount go, everybody is starting to either go deciduous, is already deciduous, <laughs> And Victoria Regina doing what Victoria Regina does this time of year. Loving it. And then there's Exile also. Holding on. Right, let's go around the tables. Colmenara Masai Red is coming along beautifully with her spikes. I am loving this. They are majestic to say the least when they look like this. Now I've got something really interesting going on here is I've got three spikes on this suitable and it's the only one with three spikes. So the two apexes have their spikes as one expects and a third spike is coming out of this apex but that is not being repeated on the other pseudobulbs. Oh, this is going to be amazing. I mean, just look at that. I love it so much. She is an impressive orchid. And I love the fact that she can be outside because she's also very, very big. The spikes on my fires are coming along. I make sure to check them daily for possible invaders that are not welcome. And there's the other one. And here are some of my summer bloomers. Today they got a fertilizer soak. The pots have been emptied now though, because in anticipation of the bad weather, I am going to not be watering them. So today was their soak last day and then the reservoirs are all empty, but they'll be fine with the cooler temperatures. I won't need to touch them again. My biggest concern for my summer bloomers is my giraffe. She has been losing leaves and I don't like the fact she's losing them at the base. You see, she's getting yellow at the base. And what you see in there is dragon's blood. I do not see any sign of rot or decay, but it was concerning enough for me that I lost a keiki here on the right. Let me see if I can guide you in there. There was a keiki growing there and it just promptly dropped its leaves. Now, if that's the cold, there's nothing I can do about that. But if there is a smidgen or hint of rot, then I've got dragon's blood in there. On the camera, this spike looks much, much yellower than it really is, but I've got to keep an eye on that, you see? That's why I put dragon's blood there, so... Giraffe is giving me room for concern. The other ones are over here, because when I drained the pots, I didn't want them to be that close. I wanted the airflow to get at all of them before I bring them inside. I've got a new spike here on my little Violacea cross. This one, it's still developing very nicely. And my Pinkton Bronze Age. Very pleased to see this spike because she didn't bloom for me in 2021. So I'm glad to see that. And down here are my orchid tops. Most of them come from Africa. Not the Renanthera monachica though. But look at this spike on my Vandaglossum Alexandra. It's coming along really well. That's great. Oh boy, if that makes that be exciting. Stan the man, hanging out, tolerating the temperatures. Also now in complete and active root growth, root production. It's amazing. I've been removing some of the hob filter because I have a feeling that bloom spikes are gonna have issues come spring. I think there's going to be a problem with bloom spikes, so I'm very, very tentatively already removing hob material because this orchid pretty much has its own kind of media now with all the moss that's growing on it. Now she looks very yellow, concerning, but that looks worse on the viewfinder as well. Giving her as much fertilizer and calcium magnesium at this point in time just to keep the energy levels up and ward off any kind of cold damage that could possibly, possibly happen. These are all the new growths. 
back here. So older leaves I'm not too concerned with, but making sure that she gets enough fertilizer to sustain the somewhat adverse conditions. She's not that happy of an orchid when it gets too cold. We haven't seen the Schweinfortianum for a long time. Looking much, much better than at the end of summer. I lost a lot of leaves at the end of last season. Just sort of like, boom, defoliated itself. That caused me some concern, but I like how the new growth on the top of the canes is coming out nice, lush, clean, fresh. So if that's part of her growth habit, I'm just getting to know this orchid. She hasn't been with me not even a year. So if part of her growth habit is to drop leaves seasonally, then that's okay as well. But she's doing really well. I'm not fertilizing her much at this point in time though, just about 160 parts per million. And she is outdoors. Come rain, come sun, she stays here. Garen Weaver is okay, getting plenty of flush, and I'm expecting the rain, and that'll help that along. I've got new growths coming. So I'm not concerned about this orchid. She looks a little bit tatty, but she's growing. The cleanup did her a load, a load of good. Cousin it, no sunglasses, seeing as it's gonna rain. I don't wanna ruin his sunglasses. Are you losing a leaf here, sir? Let's have a look. Are you losing a leaf? Or is that just not ready to come off? No, not ready yet. Beautiful display now. Really, really popping in color. Ugh, oh, I love it. He's a good guy. And up here are my little mounts, just enjoying some of the natural sun. This is the Hawiara lava burst. Oh, still hanging on, still hanging on. Yenopsis popcorn haruri, four spikes. Can you believe it? Check it out. Four spikes. That'd be awesome if they make it. Seeing as I bring this orchid in and out every single day, I might incur bud blast, but the health of the orchid is more important to me. And then here are the Brassavolas. And then here is my little Tulumia hoxonia. Very concerned about this orchid. It's a very delicate orchid and the temperatures are not to its liking at all. I've lost a fan down here. I'm just hoping that that's because it's the base where it was cut off and propagated. I'm also losing this one here. Same situation, base propagated. What's happening up here is very important and I hope it holds on. And then on the west side up here, my west shelf for the time being, the Ancelias up there are getting a radical acclimating process. Bright sun, if there is, there is no protection up there for them but this is the time for me to get them acclimated because next year, when the summer comes, they will be in this location, but on the east side where there's a lot more sun. So acclimating in progress, I'm burning some leaves in the process of doing so. Tibicinus and the Schomburgia Thompsoniana up there, they're just hanging out. Eventually, maybe we'll get some blooms, who knows? But back there, I have the twinkle. Lots of sun, lots of airflow. She is in recovery. And then we move down one shelf. I've got my Rincolelia digbiana here. Gorgeous, gorgeous sheath coming out. And I keep hoping it's gonna make it. It hasn't had enough light this time of year, but I hope she's gonna bloom for me anyway. We won't know until a couple of weeks have passed, but at least the orchid is doing well. She's alive. What else can we ask for? The same thing here, sorry for the jiggle, with the Francis Fox. The spike is coming on beautifully. Might bud blast because she is coming in and out every day as well. But again, if I risk bud blast, it's because I'm more concerned about the orchids getting the light that they need as opposed to me needing the blooms. And I'm still looking for my amethyst here. I keep checking this. I hope that's in focus. There's something in there. So I'm keeping my eye on that. It would be great to see first time blooms on Lelia Amethyst. Otherwise, everybody's just hanging in there, chilling out. I've got Catlia Leopoldii here, starting a new growth back there. 
that's important to me. I'm happy about that, I cannot tell you. Me and Leopoldi eyes, there's a history. What have you got going on down there? Always checking for bugs. This is Lobata. I'm always checking. If it looks white, what are you? If you don't belong there, we have to take care of that. What else is going on down here? The little seedlings, Dawiana and the Maxima. And then here are my little Cattleya seedlings that of course have as yet to mature. I'm losing a leaf in the back here. That's normal, it's a seedling leaf. I've got that. I'm very concerned about my stamp for the atom though. Very concerned. Not happy after the copper poisoning I put it through. Very, very worried about that one. So please keep your fingers crossed for us. And here's the little potinara I got from Fernando Nacimiento orchids and succulents. That little growth is coming along quite nicely. It's taking on shape and size. And here are all my kind of vandacious orchids. The Ampoyathea over here. Those spikes are looking good. They look like little peperomia blooms. And opposite that, I've got the rainbow forest, loose neary blue, and the loose neary normal version here. This is what they get in the afternoon. A lot of winter direct sun. My leopard yawn, chilling out. Eh, we need roots to start. They absorb, they do absorb water, but I need to see signs of new root tips or something to give me a little bit more confidence that it's not gonna die on me. And there's the Denisoniana as well. This is where they live in their pocket of warmth. So over here, it's about 23 degrees with the light radiating off the wall and a very warm little pocket, hardly any wind back here. And Kimmy, Kimmy is doing what Kimmy does best, grow. <laughs> it just grows. It's a happy orchid. It won't bloom. <laughs> I guess it's far too happy. Maybe I'm going to stop fertilizing it. It just seems to be such a happy camper that, you know, why bloom? I get it. Look at all those gorgeous roots. Oh my goodness. You know, I love this orchid so much, even that it doesn't bloom for me, but <laughs> I would like to see some blooms one day, but just its growth habit, totally fascinated by it. My little Vanda totem pole wrapped up like a mummy here, still trying to propagate the top part to see if it would do something for me. You can see sun and cold, but this is what this has to deal with and it seems to be holding on okay because the new growths that came out of the crack, the secondary crack down here, I have two new growths coming out. They are looking amazing despite the conditions being what they are. So these are getting well hydrated. This one is showing signs of weakness because of limited hydration. So the orchid as such is doing okay, despite the fact that its conditions are not to its liking. But we can see that these new growths here, they're coming along a treat. Oh, I love it. And then here's the puppy Leonanthe behind it. So last summer, I had to get it away. This is where it bloomed and I had to get it away from its own hook here so that it wouldn't catch itself in the growth pattern. So all of this was last summer. I have to also make sure that it doesn't grow into the hob material up here. Sorry about that. Definitely not the temperatures for these orchids, but they have acclimated and they're just holding on. Really, it's all I can ask. I'm just grateful for that. Look at all this intertwined in there. Imagine if I ever had to do something to remove them both. <laughs> no, it's not happening. I have no plans of doing that. <laughs> and that's it for this little go around. We're inside now. I won't continue on with an inside tour in this video. When it starts to rain and get nasty, we can have a look and see what they all look like once they're indoors. This is my Paphiopedalum chocolate mint, looking much, much more yellow in the viewfinder than it actually is 
It is now the chartreuse color that I wanted it to be. So the yellow is misleading. It is a very lime green chartreuse color. It's gorgeous because I like myself some lime green blooms with that pink blush there. So not yellow, chartreuse lime green. Not fragrant, but beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look around and I hope that everything is going well wherever you are in the world, enjoying your summer. Yes, I'm jealous. Really appreciate your time watching. Thank you so very, very much. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.